signs you are a godly person and don't even realize it. Will God forgive you of a sin that you keep repeatedly committing? You do not want to do it, but you keep doing it. You hate yourself for committing this sin. You despise yourself for consistently and repeatedly having to ask for forgiveness. Whether this sin is your temper, or some sort of drug addiction, or sexual addiction, or lying, or a promiscuous lifestyle, a sin that you utterly and completely hate and that you do not want to commit, yet you keep doing so. To the point where you are tired and ashamed of the number of times you have gone to the Lord and said, Lord, I am ashamed of this same sin. You do not want to keep going to God to apologize. And over time, you begin to question your very salvation. How can I be saved when I still struggle with sin? What type of Christian am I that I am still tempted? What kind of Christian am I that I still struggle with sin? There are those Christians who attempt to paint the picture that since they were born again, they have been sinlessly perfect, that they haven't been tempted, they haven't sinned once since coming to Christ. However, these types of Christians are self-deceived, and the Word of God describes them as such. 1 John 1 verse 8 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. When it comes to sin, there are usually four groups, and all people tend to fall under these four groups. Group 1. This group consists of Christians who sin, and it bothers them, affects them, and disturbs them because they are not comfortable with sin. They hate sin, and when they commit it, they feel troubled. Group 2. This group represents the self-deceived Christians who sin but lie about it and act as if they don't sin. Group 3. This group consists of those who claim to be Christian but they do not care about their sin. They live in their sin and it's a part of their life. They show no remorse or anguish over their actions. Sin is pretty much an accepted and enjoyed part of their everyday life, yet they profess to be Christian. And group number four. This group consists of people who are not Christians and do not even have the concept of sin. They live to please their flesh because they believe that is what life is all about, pleasing the flesh. Now I want to show you a sign of a godly person, and that is if you fall into group 1. This group consists of Christians who sin and it bothers them, affects them and disturbs them because they are not comfortable with sin. They hate sin, and when they commit it, they feel troubled. True believers in Christ are not comfortable with their sin. True believers in Christ hate sin and love God. True believers in Christ chase after holiness. Godly people are not sinlessly perfect. However, they do not love and indulge in sin. When observing the true nature of a godly person, one of the most distinct characteristics is their profound discomfort in the face of sin. This discomfort is more than just a fleeting feeling. It is a deep, internal stirring that unsettles their very core. This inherent aversion to wrongdoing is a telling sign of their close relationship with God, who embodies all things good and pure. For a godly person, every act of sin is like a sharp stone in their shoe. Just as one cannot walk comfortably with that stone pressing into their foot, a godly individual cannot exist at ease with sin in their life. This is not to say they are free from error. 
every human airs from time to time, but it's their immediate and heartfelt reaction to their missteps that truly defines them. When they make a mistake, they feel it deeply. They are pained by their distance from righteousness and are driven to bridge that gap. This stark contrast between comfort and sin is a testament to their spiritual alignment. The brighter the light within them, the clearer the shadows of sin become. So when they falter, the darkness is not just visible but palpable, urging them to return to the light. They are pulled by an irresistible force to make amends, to seek forgiveness and to reaffirm their commitment to living a life that reflects God's love and teachings. On the other hand, those distant from God might not even recognize their own sins or might easily dismiss them. For them, sin can be like background noise easily ignored or even unnoticed. But for the godly, sin is a blaring siren, impossible to disregard. In essence, a godly person's inability to be at peace with sin is a direct reflection of their heart's alignment with God. Their discomfort and urgent need to rectify their wrongs are clear indicators of their spiritual depth. And it is this very trait, this unease with sin, that marks them out as truly godly. In a world where moral lines can sometimes blur, their acute sensitivity to righteousness acts as a beacon for all those who seek a closer relationship with the divine. Paul had such a dilemma. Romans 7 verse 14 to 25 we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate to do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Paul says that he wants to do what is right and follow God's laws. Deep down he knows what is good. However, he often finds himself doing the opposite of what he knows is right. It's like there's a battle inside of him. One part of him wants to do good, but another part, which he calls sin living in him, leads him to do wrong. Paul expresses his frustrations about this. He says it feels like he is trapped, always doing things he regrets, even when he genuinely wants to do what is right. Finally, Paul exclaims, Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? 
He then answers his own question by giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. He recognizes that despite this internal struggle, salvation and victory over sin come through Jesus. In simple terms, this passage is about the struggle we all face, wanting to do good but often messing up. Paul shows that it's a common experience, even for someone as devoted as him. But there is hope through Jesus, who provides the strength and salvation to overcome this internal battle. C.S. Lewis stated, No man knows how bad he is till he has tried very hard to be good. Paul is encouraging us to push and move forward so that we have less and less sin. We should not let sin have dominion or mastery over us. We should strive to have less and less sin. As long as you are on this earth, you will never be sinless. However, as you grow in your walk with Christ, you will sin less and less. Romans 7 verse 14 to 25 explains that there is a contest within us. We want to do good, but sometimes we don't. Although Christians have been freed from sin's power, we continue to live under its powerful influence. Sometimes we may feel exactly as Paul describes. We continue to do what we hate. We sin, even when we intend to do what is right. It is not that we are still slaves to sin, but that we are divided by our competing desires. A sure sign that you are a godly person is that if you sin, you are bothered by it. When a godly person sins, they are provoked because they hate sin. They are disturbed by the sin. They are not content to live in sin. For an ungodly person, sin is like oxygen. It is a part of everyday life. 